guys, Richard Older here, and welcome to the channel. Where are my small block four guys? And wait, I know what you're going to say. Yesterday, Richard, you posted a video on power adders for small block Chevys, but we are small block four guys. Where's our nitrous? Where's our blower? Where's our turbo? Where's our video? It's right here. In this video, we're going to take a look at power adders I applied to small block Fords, starting off with a Zex perimeter plate nitro setup on a 347. We're going to follow that up with a Torque Storm supercharger on a 302, and then finish up with a turbo on a fuel-injected 302. And just as a little bonus test, I threw in a much bigger turbo on a bigger motor that makes even more power. So check it out. After doing a video, a power adder video for the small block Chevy guys, I realized I didn't want the small block Ford guys to feel left out. So here is the power adder video for the small block Ford guys, starting with nitrous run on a 347 stroker. Now this particular 347 was an SHP block. Our short block came from the guys over Dart. And we finished it off with a lot of nice things to help it make power. First off was a set of CNC ported aluminum heads from Promax. They were two 110 cc intake ports. We also put a fairly healthy camshaft in it, which to get a 347 to make power, it's going to need enough camshaft. This was an XFI 236 cam hydraulic roller from Comp Cams. It was a 579 lift, both intake and exhaust. 236, 248 at 50 on the duration and 114 degree lobe separation angle. It had 16 roller rockers. We installed an Edelbrock Victor Jr intake manifold and a 650 carburetor although this thing probably could have used a slightly bigger carburetor than that it ran best with 32 to 33 degrees of total timing we had an msd distributor and we were just prepping it basically to run our plate nitro system on so run in this manner our 347 produced 441 horsepower and 405 foot pounds of torque so it did fairly well here's how to make a good stroker motor even better we basically added a simple 100 shot, which was a 46 jet from our Zex perimeter plate. Remember, the perimeter plate has equal distribution all the way around. It's supposed to improve uh, equal cylinder filling and distribution in our single plane manifold. We ran, as I said, a 46 nitrous jet, a 40 fuel jet with low fuel pressure. We, had, we adjusted the supply pressure to the nitrous at 6 PSI and run with our nitrous setup the power output jumped to 566 horsepower peak torque was up to 520 foot pounds and again we like with the chevy we activated it a little bit late but you could activate it as early as you want the thing to notice is if you take a look at how flat the curve is on the nitrous that means we hit the tune really nicely and we didn't we didn't and we had consistent bottle pressure and we had a consistent air fuel ratio so that the power curve stayed nice and even the gains that you get from the nitrous should stay fairly even as long as you have enough nitrous flow and obviously that the tune is spot on for the whole time that the nitrous is activated and we spent a lot of time to make sure that that was the case we could have hit this thing at 3500 or 4000 which a lot of guys like to do when they're out drag racing but it takes our 400 and 40 horsepower, 441 horsepower, and pushes it over 560 horsepower. So a 560 horsepower small block, a nitrous small block, and a Fox Mustang or something is going to be a lot of fun out on the street or at the drag strip. Now let's take a look at what happens when we add a supercharger. To illustrate how well supercharging works on a small block Ford, our next power adder is a centrifugal supercharger. This one actually came from the guys over at Torque Storm, and this was run on a comparison that I did, uh, and I mentioned this motor or this this comparison in the small block Chevy video too, where we compared a 302 Ford, basically a five liter Ford, to a 305 or five liter Chevy back way back for Carcraft, and this was our Ford version, and what it was is an Explorer short block. 302. It originally had GT40 heads on it. We took those off and replaced that with a set of TFS 11R, the CNC ported 170 or 175 heads. It also had a TFS matching uh, street heat long runner intake manifold on it, an Accufab 75 millimeter throttle body, engine three quarter headers, then MSD distributor. We ran it all with the Holly HP management system. It had also part of the top end kit was also a set of aluminum roller rockers from the guys at uh, trick flow so run in this manner our naturally aspirated 302 did fairly well produced 407 horsepower 
and 397 foot-pounds of torque. You know, pretty healthy for a 302, basically, especially since we were starting with a Junkyard Explorer motor. And here's what happened when we added our Torque Storm Supercharger. The peak power jumped up a lot, 637 horsepower, 638, and 545 foot-pounds of torque. This combination, the Torque Storm, in, in typical kind of centrifugal supercharger fashion, start, it starts out with fairly low boost, and then the boost curve rises as we go up with engine speed. Kind of typical, as I said, the Pro Chargers, the Vortex, Torque Storms, all, all of those centrifugal superchargers kind of do the same thing in terms of the power curve that they deliver or the boost curve that they deliver. So it started out about 3.1 pounds down here below 3,500, and then rose to a peak of about 10 pounds out here getting near 6,500 RPM. So rising boost curve, rising power curve, but again, huge gains. You know, we went from a little over 400 horsepower to 638 horsepower and there was more left in the supercharger we've we've made over 700 with this with this particular blower and it works fairly well in this kind of range it's not going to do thousand horsepower stuff like some of the bigger blowers will but for this kind of range especially on a five liter you know works very very well now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran turbos on a small block ford Our final test on power adders for the small block Ford combination was a 302 and we added a single turbo to that and we're going to get to an even larger motor with even more boost at the end of this kind of as a little bonus test for you guys so stick around. So this was our 302 and it started out as a we ran it basically stock and then ran it with a variety of different modifications and then ran it with a nitrous ran it with boost ran it with all kinds of stuff because I like to do that while I have a motor on the dyno we did it with this 302. So this thing started out all we had was long tube headers on this thing we had an open throttle body we had the stock e7 te heads the uh stock camshaft stock short block we did have the only thing upgrade we made to the short block was a set of flat top pistons with valve release because we'd be running injectors in it um and i think that this thing might have had uh different rods in it too um and a, a rod a, a connecting rod upgrade but other, otherwise, it was stock. It had uh, big injectors in it so that we could have enough fuel to supply the eventual power mods that we would be making. We ran this thing. It made best power at 34, 33 to 34 degrees of timing with the long tube headers. And we ran a, a, a dedicated engine management system. In this case, it was a Holley so that we could optimize the air fuel and timing. But running stock trim, basically, with headers on it, our 5 liter made 261 horsepower and for torque 321 foot pounds of torque and here's what happened after we ran a series of modifications on this thing i'm not going to go through them individually but eventually we stepped up to a set of aluminum heads a ported holly system x manifold and the uh, extreme energy 274 cam that i usually run in these small block forwards so we'll take a look at the modifications here it had a set of rhs 215 cnc ported aluminum heads probably more than we needed for this power level. Uh, the the system axe, a bigger throttle body, Extreme Energy 274 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It's a 224, 232 at 50, 555, 565, and a 112, I think, are the specs on that. I'll go ahead and put those up. But run after our modifications, 395 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque from the small block Ford. And here's what happened when we added a single turbo with a kit from the guys from HP Performance. Nice curve, over 600 horsepower, 621 horsepower, 637 foot-pounds of torque. So the thing did really well. And this was at about 10 pounds of boost. Uh, again, 600 horsepower, 600 plus horsepower on a small block Ford in a, in a Mustang um, is really good. And the thing that makes it feel really, really fast is look at the torque curve. I mean, we're over 600 foot-pounds for from 3,700 all the way out to 5,400, and over 550 foot-pounds basically everywhere. I mean, we're, we we didn't load this thing at 2,500 with the turbo, but you probably could. The turbo that we used was a 72 millimeter. We had an air-to-air -air intercooler on it, so this was a really good um, turbo combination for this 5 liter, and it shows you what they can do. But if you really want to get crazy with the turbo, you can also do that because this is a fairly mild combination. I'll show you what happened when we ran 
take a look at that. That is a thousand horsepower, 17 pounds of boost, big single turbo, 363 inch stroker small block Ford with airflow research heads and you know the whole not big camshaft, the whole nine yards. Everything's done up. It has the same turbo kit basically, but just a much bigger turbo. Yeah, this one was either a precision or a, a pro comp turbo, an 80 millimeter, 76, 78 millimeter, enough to support those power level, 17 pounds, four digit power level. So it doesn't matter what you want to do with a turbo. You can go mild or wild. You can make all the power that you want. You just got to size the turbo to do that. And if, obviously, if you have enough motor, you can do that. I don't know that I would try the thousand horsepower thing on a stock five liter, but on a modified one, no problem. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn in this shout out video to small block Fords with power adders? That's right. We learned the same thing that we learned in the previous video on small block Chevys. Small block Fords respond very well to power adders, whether it's nitrous or boost from a blower or boost from a turbo. Here's the important thing. When you're looking at making big power gains, take a look at nitrous. It's easy. It bolts on. It makes huge gains. You want 100 horsepower? No problem. Want 150 or 200? No problem. Nitrous has to cover it. The important thing when selecting boost, whether it is a supercharger or a turbo, make sure to select a supercharger or a turbo that size correctly for the kind of power you want to make. There's no reason to select a thousand horsepower supercharger if you only want to make 500 horsepower. And this is very, very important on turbo selection. If you only need to make five or 600 horsepower, there's no reason to select a thousand horsepower turbo because if you do, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to make 500 horsepower, but it's going to be a lot softer down low. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.